Wide Web. I am so excited that we are hanging with author Dorothy Stacy in a little town just outside of Utica, New York at her home. Dorothy is an author of historical fiction for middle-aged grade school children. Dorothy wrote such books as The Erie Canal Cousins, Three Weeks in Utica, Albany Homecoming, just to name a few. So today we are hanging with Dorothy to talk about her latest book and uh, meet Dorothy, the mom, wife, grandmother, and career woman. So thank you, Dorothy, for hanging with us. Um, so this is your latest book. This is my latest book, and it's called Home and City Mystery. It's about a basin, a gigantic basin that is located on Holman City Road, uh, belonging to, um, can't think of his name, <laughs> but anyway, it's on his property, and it was uh, supposedly caused, well, I don't want to give the whole story away, so I can't really tell you what caused it, because through the book, the boy is trying to find out the reason for it being there, and this takes place in 1858, so he's, um, doesn't have all the modern things to find out stuff about. He doesn't have computers or anything like that, so he has to go and search for these books and find ways to determine just exactly how the basin was caused. And uh, a lot of this, a lot of the investigation causes him to actually get into reading and writing, which is something that he hated and he really didn't like very much, but. Uh, in order to find out, he has to keep records and do all this stuff. So this is the story of how he actually finds out how this uh, basin was created. So there's three theories that he starts out with. The Ice Age theory, the, um, let's see, what's the other one? Um, there's another one, but I can't remember what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I've written so many books that it's hard to remember all these little tidbits. But anyway, um, the, the last one is uh, some kind of an explosion, which he comes up with. I had to sort of sneak it in somehow because they really didn't know about things like that in those days. But um, I had a way, I found a way to get it in there and so that he could um, come to that determination. And uh, my son did the cover. He's an artist, Patrick Stacy. Um, he likes, mostly likes to do cartoons, but he did this as a favor for me. So my children are very talented artists. Art kind of runs in the family, and I did all the illustrations inside of my. So Dorothy, tell us what is your least favorite part of the publishing and writing process? The hardest part in publishing was the first book, because I really didn't know anything about it, and I had to learn um, from a manual from a printing company, and it was Morse Publishing, which is very, very helpful. So I would encourage any new writers that are interested and to go and get their manual, because they tell you from start to finish how to finish. Now, this is not a plug, but, you know, right. they were very good, and they published or printed all of my books for me. I actually do the publishing myself, because I've started um, my own publishing company called Blackberry Hill Press, and... I only do my own books, though. I've had, uh, you know, people have asked me if I would do theirs, but I only have, I only have time to do the one. Mm -hmm. um, the hardest part, well, that was the hardest part. Now I am pretty familiar with the publishing process, so that's not too difficult. The hardest part of writing the book, for me, is the middle, because at the end of each book, I always come up with the first line for the next book. It just sort of hits me right in the head, and mm -hmm. I uh, write that maybe the first six or seven lines uh, before, or p maybe even paragraphs before I get going uh, to leave off of that other book. So in the end, um, yeah, the end usually comes to me. I don't really plan it out like in steps mm -hmm. and make an outline of the whole thing. I just kind of 
go along and the, then the characters start talking to me and they tell me. Sometimes I have something in mind and they tell me they want something different. Oh. And I have to go <laughs> by what they want and they tell me such things as like the first book. Um, my One of the characters, the boy in there, told me that he didn't know how to read or write, which like, okay, you don't. <laughs> and he told me about, you know, his coming from Ireland and um, being an orphan because his parents were uh, killed in an epidemic so he was on his own and he ended up being the hoagie on their boat which uh, was good because that boat was owner was a good he was a good man but then sometimes they got onto these boats where where the uh, captain was cruel mean didn't pay them would beat them and things like that. So he ran away from three or four other boats because of that, and he landed up with them on um, their boat, the Flying Eagle. So he made out pretty good there. But I mean, they tell me all these little things as I'm walking through the hall downstairs doing my walking or something. All of a sudden, the characters are telling me what's going on. Oh, so that's pretty interesting. Yeah, and then the middle is hard because I have to make sure that, you know, the, the beginning and the ending come together. Now, I know right. some people say the beginning is hard for them, but it really isn't for me. Uh, what do you consider to be your uh, best accomplishment? My best accomplishment is my eight beautiful children, oh. and after that, my eight beautiful books. <laughs> 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 um, just as you may inspire other authors, what authors have inspired you? Why did you want to become a, an author? Uh, I've always wanted to become an author from when I was seven years old. Oh. I uh, had a great, or a great, yes, a great uncle who brought books like. I don't know if I should say this, but they were from the Utica Public Library, and they told him to get rid of them because they were old and torn and not in good shape. He, but he always brought them to our house and left them at our house. And I started reading things like Alice in Wonderland and um, The Wizard of Oz and things like that, and I really enjoyed those books very much. So um, I always wrote little things like three, three, this quarter of this size pages of... The Adventures of Rosemary, and wow. Rosemary was a, me, really. And when I went to my grandmother's house three miles away in East Utica, which was a long way and then, mm -hmm. Rosemary would go in to visit her grandmother, too. So I did that, and then when I was in um, grade school, I was a very good girl. And so <laughs> I sat in the, we had 57 children in our class, so myself and another girl, we sat uh, together in the last seat in the class. So... Her and I both like to write, so we would each write. We were writing um, soap operas <laughs> and during, during class, and then we would switch and, uh, and put them on the seat between us, and we would read them, to, uh, you know, and then pass them back and write some more. And we did this all through, I don't remember which grade it was, but it was a lot of fun, and, um, you know, we did that, and then... I, uh, well, you know, way back then it was really hard to get published, and if you weren't already published or if you didn't know somebody in the publishing business, you just wouldn't get your book published. So when I got married and had kids, I decided, well, I don't know if I'm going to, I started to write, like, sh uh, short stories and things, and I tried to submit them, but, you know, it just didn't work out. So after a while, I kind of got discouraged because I had so many things to do with the kids and everything that I uh, didn't get into it um, after that. But I always had like a little something going, a diary or um, something like that, that uh, I made use of my writings. And then um, when my kids grew up, I went to school because I decided I wanted to be a teacher. So I went to school for um, nights, one class at a time. And I volunteered at Sequoia to teach their preschool, which they, it was a volunteer thing, and um, they told you what to do and everything. So it was easy, and I loved it. So I thought, well, I'll just get a two-year degree and go and work in uh, nursery school. So I got the two-year degree, and then I just couldn't stop because I love learning and reading and things like that. So then I went to, um, uh, got my four-year degree from Empire College, which is uh, college without door, without um, walls, 
And uh, then I wanted to get my master's degree, which I never <laughs> thought I would do when I got certified for teaching and all that. And then I taught probably for about 13 years. Then I retired, and uh, then I said, ah, this is the time. And my uh, first grade class, we went on a trip to uh, the Erie Canal Village, and, which is no more, but um, you could ride on the packet bow. And, and then I saw the movie, I mean, I had never learned about the Erie Canal in school, and then I saw the movie about how the Erie Canal was actually um, uh, formed and all that, and it just impressed me with the difficulties people had to go through, and it was all dug by hand and everything. Um, and I thought, well, wow, why not write a book about a girl traveling on the Erie Canal with her uh, a family her, of cousins and, uh, you know, explore bring the history of this kind of thing to kids in a way that they could understand it and maybe throw in some um, talk about uh, talk that was popular in those days so I had to actually put a glossary in there because I didn't know if they would really understand um, some of the sayings but they were really cute and uh, I don't know if you can hand me that first book I <coughs> This was uh, the first book that I wrote, and it uh, has a lot of, of terms about, technical terms about the canal, the boat, the ship, and how it was actually, uh, how life was on a day-to-day -day basis and what they did. Um, and this girl is very, very shy, so she gets on this boat with this boisterous group of cousins, and especially one girl, Bridget, who is um, a little bit younger than her, is the terror of the boat and they just do not get along and they just fight through the whole book um, at the end they sort of become friends but um, you know there's always that little hesitation there because she never knows what Bridget is going to do <laughs> and one time Bridget uh, pretended she was drowning she she jumped in the water she stood on the edge of the boat and she said let's play a game let's see how close we can get to the edge of the boat and this other girl um, she just didn't want to do it. She said, uh-uh. She goes, I'm not doing that. And then she kept edging her on and edging her on. And finally, she pretended she fell off the end of the boat. And she yelled that she was drowning. I'm drowning. I need help. I need help. And so, of course, the other girl runs and tells her mother that this girl is drowning. And the mother starts laughing. And she goes, why are you laughing? She says, Bridget can swim. And the... the canal is only four feet deep. She's not going <laughs> to drown in there. So, um, you know, it's, it's very, my books are all full of humor, um, family stories, things they did like play checkers in those days and um, cards and they had little shows on the boat. And each one has a little ghost story in it too. So um, that makes it interesting. And a lot of history, but the history is integrated into it so that you can't really uh, tell that you're learning history. It just sort of goes along with the story, and you get to know, um, you know, a lot of things. And that's what I, my books mainly I want to do is to show kids that history can be interesting. You know, not just dates, uh, right. things that happened and things like that, but when you actually get into the whole of the history and the year that, and this is, um, this book is 18, in 1840, and the other books are 1857, and I sort of like made sure I found out all about what was going on in the country, in um, their area of the woods and things like that. Um, so it is pretty accurate, as, as accurate as I can get it, <laughs> and in fact, um, my one daughter told me I made a mistake oh. <laughs> in one of the books, and she said, you know, Mom, there's no 23, I don't know, 20-something um, gun salute. She goes, that's not right. So I looked it up because I thought, well, gee, maybe I am wrong. So I looked it up, and they said, nope, that, at that time, point in time, that was right because um, that was how many states there were. But as they oh. got more states, they had to change it. And you know, have a different book. Ah. So, and then I almost made a mistake in another book by saying in school they did the Pledge of Allegiance, 
which they would never have done in those days because it wasn't even around until the late 1800s. <laughs> so thankfully, I was able to correct that mistake before the book went out. But um, yeah, it's fun. I really enjoy it. I am not in the process of writing anything right now because I am hooked on ancestry, <laughs> looking up my ancestors Inheritance. and things like that. But I will probably write at least two more books in this series because I wanted, there's two more towns left that I haven't focused on yet, so. Um, oh, so there's maybe something coming in the future. Yes, you never know. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Where can someone find your books? Well, Barnes and Noble um, and Amazon on the web. I, they, Barnes and Noble used to carry them all, but I don't know. They sort of changed hands with uh, uh, their uh, community representatives, and it, this one is works differently than the other. But I did have a book signing there with a group in uh, October, and I did sell like about th almost 30 books. So okay. I've had several book signings at Barnes and Noble, like one from separately when I had the other books. And let's see where else. Um, uh, Riley's Dairy down here carries them. Um, not, they don't have them all right now because I didn't get there with the new one yet, but <laughs> <laughs> they're very accommodating. And um, my distributor is North Country Books. Well, oh, we're still, we're good? Beautiful. Okay. So you have a beautiful, beautiful home. Mm -hmm. It's about 200 years old. 217 years old. Uh, being a historian, have you done any history on your house? Yes, my house was... Uh, built by the first settler in East Sequoia, and he actually owned all of East Sequoia at one time and sold off parts of the property. Um, his name is Spencer Briggs, and he, uh, let's see, he had, I think he had a little log cabin, my husband thought anyway, down by the road first, and then he built this house. Um, it was modernized in 1905, and all the chair railings were taken out, and all the old-fashioned windows were taken out and my husband had a fit and we <laughs> we put the chair railings back in again <laughs> except for the fact that the house has lath and plaster in between and the first winter we came here we almost froze to death so um, he oh, insulated it on the inside and now it, you know it's a lot better you've lived here a long time for uh, almost 40 years I, we moved the day before I had my last son. <laughs> oh, oh my I didn't goodness. do any moving. I just did, um, I sat. And then I said, when I get home from the hospital, I just would like to have one couch in the living room clean that I can sit on with the baby, and that's it. <laughs> so they did. <laughs> so you love photography. Yeah. Do you get ideas for your illustrations from taking your photos? Yes, yeah, some of them, um, like... Let's see, I think um, the one book over there, uh, the I did the Doolittle Schoolhouse. Um, it's the first one, the, fir the blue one. No, the other one. Just give me both of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is the one. Yes, because they go to the Doolittle Schoolhouse. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, this is the boy and the girl that I drew, and then you can see, oh. like, my son did not do such a good job on the first book. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's crooked or not, but, but uh, those, that's the twins, and they are the second, um, the second ones, and the, I put the bigger picture in the back of the, this is the Paris Hill. I always have a map of, in my books oh. of... Good. So this is Paris Hill, where the story takes, part of the story takes place, and where they go for their celebrations and things like that. This is my second series. And this is... I just love the way that you incorporate the fiction into, you know, real history. I think that's pretty clever. <laughs> that, I wouldn't write any other, and I like to read historical fiction. I read The Outlander and you know, that whole series, which was so long. All right, where is that picture now? It's hiding here someplace. I have a small one on the front page, but I know I have a big one back here someplace. No, 
Okay, I know I don't know. <laughs> I can't find it, but it's, <laughs> it's on. Right. There's a small one on the front on the cover <clears throat> that is the same as the big one, but it's just condensed. No, I can't find that one either. That one. And this is a schoolhouse which has been refurbished, and we actually have the kids there from Sequoia School. In, this year it's going to be May, and they come to spend a, the fourth graders come and spend a half a day there, and they uh, see what school was like in the 1800s. Oh. And some of them dress up, and some um, wear their uh, old-fashioned clothing, and then they bring their snack in a container, in which they decorate at school. Um, some of them wear a mob cap, and you know it's really cute. They come oh, in fine. and they sit down, and then I don't know if you know Polly Blunk, but she's a local artist. And she, well, she's like, I won't say her age because then she won't like it, but <laughs> she's a little older than me. And we go down and we're the teachers and we uh, have a spelling bee and all that kind of stuff. And the kids just look forward to it so much every year. They just can't wait to come up there. How um, fun. This book, I did an illustration of this one I know, um, the Sequoia Academy. And this was oh, actually yes. in Sequoia. And the Sequoia Academy was a very elite kind of high school. And they had to pay tuition. They had to pay, um, they had to have some uh, children board with some of the people in Sequoia. Um, they had to pay for each course. They had oh, things like, oh, and then they actually um, could get a Regents Diploma. And they uh, had things like um, higher English, math and sciences, classical, Latin, Greek. French, German, drawing, crayoning, oil painting, music, vocal, and uh, instrumental. And the reason that they had so many drawing things in those days is they didn't have cameras and they couldn't take pictures, so they had to um, rely on portraits and things of uh -huh. people. So that was very interesting, too. And this is actually the Doolittle Schoolhouse inside, but. Oh. I had my son use it for this <laughs> for this cover because I just liked it um, so much. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I use photos, uh, but not. Yes, even even the um, characters I've used photos for. So, do you have any strange writing habits? Yeah, I write. I stay up late at night. <laughs> I'm a night person. Your, I love to stay up. A glass of wine and. Nah. <laughs> I don't need wine. When I when I sit down and I really get into the story, I am in the story. I don't even know what's going on around me. I could be there till 7 or 8 o'clock at night without eating supper and not even realize that I didn't eat supper because oh, my mind is my just goodness. in the story and focusing on the people. So, um, you know, they start talking to me, and that's why I miss it right now. I really need to get, get back right <laughs> keep going on to another book. <laughs> If you were a superhero, who and what would your name be, and what costume would you wear? Oh my gosh, that is too hard. <laughs> superhero? Uh, oh, I don't know. What are your grandkids like? Are they oh, into they the like, superhero? Yes, my youngest, uh, who is three years old, he likes, um, let's see, Batman, not Batman, the other one, with... Um, uh, Superman, Spider-Man, Spider-Man, oh, Spider and Superman and Batman, actually <laughs> all of them. They had a uh, superhero wedding when they got married, his mother and father, oh, and oh, it was cute. so cool. It was a lot of fun. The girls dressed in like different colors of superheroes. I mean, they oh, were dresses, so they yeah. didn't, it wasn't disrespectful or anything, but. Um, oh, how nice. That's mm -hmm. different. Yeah. So what's coming up for you? Anything? Well, I have a signing at the uh, Gems Along the Mohawk, July 15th. And um, this will be the bicentennial of the beginning of the Erie Canal, which actually took place on July 4th, 1817. I'm also open to anything to do with the Erie Canal, any kind of celebrations. If anybody wants me to come, just give me a call. I'm also going to be at the Interlake and Historical Society for their Transportation Day on September 9th. This is 20 miles south of Seneca Falls, and I will be doing a presentation called 15 Miles on the Erie Canal, which will sort of be on um, life on the canal because um, this is a transportation day, 
and I will I have a PowerPoint that I will probably show and I have several different kinds of programs you know that I do besides that I do one on um, early schooling in, in this area and um, how I became an author and seven other things and that one's kind of a funny one about my life so <laughs> <laughs> Well, guys, it has been so much fun hanging with Dorothy Stacy today. Don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment and let us know what you think of today's show and our guest. You can also check the guest link below. Remember to subscribe and log in and stay tuned to see who we're hanging with next. Mm.